which which season three, congratulations, by the way. Thank you very much. So much more opportunity to explore I know. different avenues. Dude, wait till you see the finale and then you see like what door that they have opened up. It's really gonna blow your mind. Because you're filming the two-part finale now, yes? yes. Okay. And, we are. And you obviously can't tell me anything about that. Uh, a little bit. Okay. I can tell you that you are going to glimpse the alternate universe and the people in the alternate universe. So you get to see Astrid over there, who by the way, is so different than the reality of this Astrid. Like, as different as you could possibly get. That's interesting, because one of my questions would be, what would you say to Alt Astrid? You know, we have Walternate, but there's an Alt Astrid. What would you say to her? I would say, Altrid, what is wrong with you? <laughs> get it together, because she is a little bit out there. So she's different. She's very different, and it's, it's super awesome, because, you know, they could have done an easy thing and, you know, had her in different clothes or changed her hair or something, but they changed something fundamental about her. Ooh. And so it's kind of like uh, playing a completely different character in Fun. the same show. Yeah, it's really cool. Very you know, cool. Who gets the opportunity to do that, except for uh, the guy who's on Quantum Leap. Right, <laughs> every day. like my right. dream role. <laughs> where you get to You're young somebody. yet, that might be happening for you. <laughs> what if they do a Quantum Leap movie? They okay. can make it about a young African-American woman who just travels through time. Do it. Some network, sign her up, seriously. And while we're speaking of that, why doesn't someone sign her up for a Clairol commercial or like oh, hair? Because right. seriously, her hair is fantastic. <laughs> I digress. Okay, back to Fringe. <laughs> Your relationship, you know, Astrid's relationship with Dr. Bishop is one of the highlights for a lot of people. It's, it's very organic, it's very nurturing. It is. Is, did that develop over time, or do you have that natural chemistry with John Noble? You know, I, I definitely think that we have such a, a lovely rapport mm -hmm. in real life with each other that that ended up translating into the script. Because that, that stuff wasn't written in in season one. You know, Astrid was really kind of a peripheral character, and, you know, she certainly developed, but she developed through her relationship with Walter. And so you started to see the elements of, of the caring, uh, kind, and warm-hearted Walter versus, you know, the old Walter that you've heard about, where right. he was kind of ruthless and didn't really uh, care much about uh, the human lives that he was affecting so much. And so you see him really trying to, to make amends and to, to reinvent himself. And I think he's able to kind of do that with, with Astrid's help. It's, it's nice to watch, and I, I look forward to how they further that relationship, even in season three. Yeah, me too. Not, not in a dirty way, in a very father-daughter <laughs> kind of way. I just want to clarify. <laughs> Speaking of Dr. Bishop... I hear that there's uh, perhaps some singing in a future episode. There is. Can you tell us a little bit about that? It's an episode, it's called Overture. And uh, of course, you know, when people hear that there's a musical episode, they roll their eyes and they're like, okay, well that doesn't make sense in this world. It totally does. <laughs> because uh, we're basically, they're with Walter and Walter, you know, this huge bombshell has just been dropped for Peter. So the audience and Walter and everyone else is kind of waiting to see what's Peter gonna do? Is he gonna be upset? Is he gonna leave? Is he gonna come back? So so that's, that's where we are in this episode. We're just kind of like sitting there twiddling our thumbs waiting for what's going to happen. And so to take his mind off of it, he starts telling this little story. Hmm. And this story, he's, you know, kind of invented this world where everybody, it, it takes place in the 1940s, but there's still cell phones and computers. <laughs> Wow. It's so cool. That's, I cannot wait it's, to see that. It's just his brain, yeah. you know, kind of churning and telling the story. And so you get to see um, kind of the important things about each character stand out, you know, because it's just a story. So whatever is is important to Walter, that's how you see those characters. And it's really cool because we get to sing. It'll be fun to see, a, you know, it's such a serious show. I mean, obviously there are moments of levity, but it'll be nice to see a fun, no, you know, really. version of everybody. It's something that's really light, but the most beautiful part of it is that at the end of the episode, it's, you know... Everything, of course, is incredibly symbolic because it's just a, a bit of a manifest of what, you know, Walter is going through and the inner turmoil that he's facing in the end of it is kind of really heartbreaking when you see exactly what it is that he's dealing with and how sad he is and how crushed because he can't do anything. He can't change Peter's mind. Mm. can't make Peter do anything. He just has to wait and see what's going to happen. Right. Yeah. Ooh, that's good. No, it is good. It's good. It's, they get better. Oh. They just keep getting better, I mean, too. Peter blew my mind, I that know, episode, so the, the flashbacks and the way they lit um, you know, him, made him look younger. It was fantastic. I can't wait to see it. That's I've right. only read it, like I said, and she's seen it, and I have not, so. It's amazing. <laughs> mm -hmm. One great. last fun question for you. What yeah. has been the coolest case to work on in the lab, like, or either in or out of the lab, maybe most disgusting, maybe most fun? Oh, you know, for a long time, my most disgusting episode was um, the episode with uh, the body who had been impregnated by the monster mm. with the worms and the worms bust out of his yeah. chest. And there was a real actor with the worms Ooh. who was zipped up in a body bag oh. for minutes at a time with live worms crawling <sighs> all over him. That was 
What that a daring was actor. Tough. I know. It was really special and it was crazy. And they would like start crawling oh. up towards his face okay. and stuff in the Bible. But mm. anyway, w there's something that has replaced that one. Oh. It's an episode that we haven't okay. shared yet, so it's going to be in this next chunk. But uh, it has to do with the shapeshifter. Oh. And of course, the shapeshifters make another appearance. And so. Um, of course, I can't give too much right. away, but basically what happens, I mean, I know that there's going to be a lot of uh, CGI and special effects mm -hmm. with this, but we get to see something kind of mutate right before our mm -hmm. eyes. And I knew what was going to happen, and I walked onto the set, and I... <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's breath was taken away, and I could even see the people underneath with like you know the little gadgets and doodads making it work. But it was still really, really awful looking. Wow! It's so cool. I can't wait till you get to see. Oh, it. you've given us so many good tidbits. I totally I appreciate it. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. So good to see you again. You as well, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. This is Justika Nicole from Fringe. <laughs>